perspective. He's slow from our perspective. So the human perspective of his speed is slow, slower, and slowest. Slowest being the most common speed. We're talking about perspective and the purposes of God and his timing that drives us nuts. We can see it throughout the history of God's dealings with his people, delivering them out of Egypt 400 years, Moses in the wilderness 40 years, Abraham waiting for his child from the time God promised him at 75 till he was almost nine, or till he was 99. That's almost 25 years. When you're already 75, it's a long time. <laughs> so uh, we need to learn to be patient with God and not to expect him to move every time we ask him to, like some magical butler. So another example is when Lazarus was sick and about to die, Jesus received word that he was needed and there was plenty of time for him to get there and to heal, heal him. And this was his friend, right? So Jesus hears this message and immediately asks for a, a peach and, a long, and takes a long nap. And, uh, and then, Lazarus does, uh, then Lazarus dies and, it, and suddenly he's ready to go. Uh, when he gets there, everyone is weeping and mourning, and they ask Jesus why it took so long. And if he had already been there, when he was still, when he still had plenty of time, he could have healed him. But anyone can lay hands on a sick man and heal him. But it was extremely rare to bring somebody back from the dead. Two things were accomplished by this, at least. One being Jesus is the Messiah, and two, God moves at God's pace because he knows better than we do what is going on at all times. All right, so this is, a, this is a clip from Brother Vince Severis. As of 2020, the world population was about 7.8 billion people. 2.1 billion of them claim to be Christian. Half of those are Catholic, so they don't count, right? <laughs> the other half are Protestant Christians, which is all other denominations, and only 4% of those Protestant Christians claim to be non-denominational, which is about 36 million out of 7.8 billion people in the world, that's less than 1%. When he began to look at this number, it hit him like a ton of bricks, how incredible the overwhelming need in the earth is for us to go forth and to reach out for God and bring souls to Jesus Christ. Made ever more urgent by the limited time we have before Judgment Day when Jesus comes back to judge the world, the harvest is ripe and ready for us. If you feel the calling to go, you must go. The nations are pleading for our help. They are confused and misled and need the clarity Jesus can give them. The nations are begging us, please help us. Please help us before we die. The need is great, and those who will go are few. If you go, God will use you. All right, so this is from, the, this is like the tip of the iceberg for all these. Um, as Pastor Joe Rice told us, Jesus is an idiom, uh, Jesus used an idiom of having a good eye or having a bad eye, which is essentially your attitude toward others. A good eye is to look out for the needs of others and to be generous in giving to causes other than your own. A bad eye would be the greed and stinginess type of eye. The parable of the vineyard owner and the vineyard workers were at the end where everyone collects their pay the first there that labored all day got the same pay as the ones who labored for only one hour. The ones who labored all day grumbled to the owner and said, this is not fair. The owner told them, it is, not, is it not lawful for me to do as I wish with my own things, or is your eye evil because I am good? Jesus uses this as an idiom to describe a situation where someone has a bad eye. In this life, stinginess is literally a bad eye person. They have no idea that poverty awaits them. One example of a good eye person. When Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac, God provided a ram to sacrifice in his place. So Abraham named the mountain, the Lord will provide, which is literally, the Lord will see, and then he will provide. What Abraham meant was that when God sees our need, he will certainly respond. How many people know that God's responded to you? You know why? Because he has a good eye. And he wants all of us to have a good eye also. Having a bad eye also points to a more fundamental issue. What is your primary motivation in life? Is your driving concern your own comfort, or do you look beyond yourself? Evermore today, our Christian culture reinforces our self-centeredness. <laughs> Sermon titles increasingly aim to entice us to church's doors by appealing to our felt needs. We have a book called 
your best life now. I prefer to have my best life later. Because this one's only for 80 years. The other is for eternity. So we have preachers around now who are appealing to our bad eye. All felt needs, all this life, nothing about eternity. Then Pastor Joe said, he wants to help us regain our good eye. He then said, why is our eye toward others so critical to Jesus? Well, because our relationship with money reveals our relationship with God. Amen. All right. Very good. All right.